Hello everyone, I am back, and today I'm going to be talking about what I've read in the month of November 2022. I put out a video last week of what I picked up this month, and now I'm going to be going through pretty much everything that I've read, obviously up until the point that I have recorded this video, which I'm going to admit is a couple of days before the end of November, so I might sneak an extra couple of things in there that I'll talk about in December. But, um, you know, I'm just, I've been reading a lot of manga, at least for me. You know, when I go through all my stuff, some of you will be like, I've read that much in a week. But, you know, I, I have things going on, so, and I have other interests, so I can only read so much manga, though I do love reading about it, really reading about it, reading it, and reading about it, I guess, and just, like, talking to you guys about it. So I appreciate you being here. Let's dive into it. I'm also going to say no specific order. I feel like these were kind of in the order in which I read them, roughly, but not really. I talked about it in my last video, but I kind of use a randomizer to pick what I read next, just to keep things, like, fresh, uh, and to make sure I actually get through everything that I buy, um, which is going to take a while, but, you know, it, it helps me. So that's... Um, kind of why you'll see, you know, one volume of one thing, more volumes of another, not because I really want to read anything more or less, just because that's just how it was, luck of the draw. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is Death Note. So I have my Death Note all-in-one edition here, I'm like, I'm just going to get the cheapest edition because I don't know if I'm going to love Death Note, I really don't want to spend a bunch of money collecting it, I'm, I, but I do want to read it, so I might as well get this edition. It is cumbersome to read. And I realized this when I bought it, but I still kind of just read it online. But I'm glad I own it. Even if this tome is like way too cumbersome to realistically read for a, a, a large portion of time. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Let's talk about Death Note Volume 1 because that's all I've read so far. I enjoy Death Note. It is kind of exactly as edgy as I expected it to be, but I didn't expect it to get that edgy sort of that fast. Like within like the first volume, or not, well, yeah, within the first volume, but also within the first chapter, the first like two chapters. Really interesting to see how like all these like sort of, I guess like weird psychological games are developing and playing out um, between Light and L already. Really interesting to like learn about all the little nuances of the Death Note and stuff, but I feel like this is a manga or anime that almost everyone has read or watched. Personally, I haven't before. I don't know why. Um, it always seemed kind of fun, and a lot of people I know talk about it, so I'm interested in really getting a, a better perspective of the series, and I enjoyed the first volume. Next, I'm going to talk about um, One Punch Man Volume 7. So I read this, uh, if it wants to focus, I read this just the other day, and it's basically the conclusion of the arc where this like alien invader guy comes in, and he's supposed to be really strong, and he's kind of not that strong, you know? Um, pretty fun. This is, I believe, the end of the first season of the anime. Um, coincides with this. I really enjoy that One Punch Man volumes have like a lot of bonus content like I would say half of this volume is bonus content which is you know good and bad you kind of just want to like read the actual story but the bonus content is actually really good it's it's uh, interesting and really flushes out the main plot even more so it's not like um, you know like a little bonus comic and like a, a some I don't I can't give a specific but like in another manga where you're like I don't really even want to read this you know it's just like it was just kind of nonsense that they felt like they had to tack on, but this is like actually, actually interesting and uh, progresses like the plot a little bit and stuff. So it's uh, really been enjoying reading One Punch Man. Unfortunately, this is Volume Seven. I do not own Volume Eight, and then I have like nine through fourteen. So I gotta get Volume Eight, and then I'll continue the series um, once the wheel selects it because I have no choice. I hope that was, that was clear that was a joke. I can pick whatever I read, I just think it's more fun. <laughs> so, up next we have Asadora Volume 3, and I love this series. I don't know why I thought I might not love it. I, mean, I think just the idea of reading Naoki Urasawa's work volume to volume is instead of like being able to read all of it pretty quick because it's already all out. Not wasn't like off-putting to me, but I'm like I'm so used to just reading his entire series like kind of front to back, just because I've 
that's almost entirely how I've read his stuff. But honestly, like, I love his work so much, and this is no exception. Like, this is an interesting sort of, like, slice... I don't want to call it a slice of life, because that's not accurate. But it feels kind of like a slice of life combined with an action story about a really mysterious kaiju that's only around sometimes and like you know there's not a ton of information about it and they're trying to get information about it and it's just it's like most of his work it's really grounded in the characters i really like asa as a protagonist i think she's really interested and like spirited or interesting and spirited and i love the series so i'm excited to read more of it i think i only have um, up to volume four but i'll be getting uh, caught up with this series quite soon, at least in terms of owning it. Okay, so the series that I read the most this month was uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Part 8, JoJo Leon. So I read volumes uh, 5 through 8, so four volumes. The wheel really decided it was a JoJo Leon month, and that's okay, um, because I've been wanting to reread it. I, I probably said this in my last video or whatever, but I basically like read the majority of Jojo Leon until I caught up with it and then after that I had a hard time like uh, keeping up to it like month to month and I forget a lot of it because I caught up in like 2016 2017 ish you know so I want to go back reread it all and really get the full scope of that story when I read its ending but uh volumes five through eight cover the like second half of the shakedown road fight all the way up until the first fight with like a rock man uh, in the introduction of Jobin. Um, so I am ex like, the stuff here isn't my favorite part of the story. You know, like I'm really excited to get to the stuff with like uh, Damo or Damo. Um, like that, that was really the highlight of reading part eight. And I do enjoy what's going on here. Um, I don't remember the beetle fight being my favorite. Part, but I'm excited to, you know, get past the beetle fight. Not that it's bad, but like I don't remember it being particularly enthralling. I really am genuinely enjoying it. I love seeing Araki's art, especially having read all of the rest of JoJo pretty much. Um, I'm really getting to see it develop from what it was um, and change style so so dramatically. So it's, that's a lot of fun. Up next is Volume Three of Wonder Cat Kyuchan. Um, and it, this is like one of my favorite silly little joke manga, you know, because I do like having some comedy manga in my collection and this, this does genuinely make me laugh. This is a very much like a feel good, cutesy comedy. It's printed in, you know, full color, but the color is like typically just like, you know, um, sort of pastel palettes really cute genuinely very funny just like an absolute delight to read like if you're looking for like just something really silly and lighthearted and cute this is a go-to series and i don't see it in like anyone's collection but it's so good it's so fun if you have read it let me know what you think so yeah thank you why did i say why did i say thank you you're like no you're welcome like you're welcome that you get to sit here and uh, listen to me talk about a funny little cat. So next we're going to talk about maybe my biggest disappointment from this month. Um, and that is volume one of Futari Escape. So I straight up did forget to include this in my um, purchase manga or like my, my haul from November because I bought it and I read it. I was really excited for this. So the description is kind of like... There's this um, overworked manga artist and her senpai or whatever who are basically, like basically in this manga they just like slack off and go around and do fun stuff. And it's about them like not wanting to work and you know, whatever. It's, that's relatable. Um, but the series was also described as like, you know, like a relaxing GL, like girls love, kind of like, you know, romantic type thing. and. It was kind of a letdown to me. Like it wasn't, it wasn't really funny. Personally, I didn't find it that funny. And it's, it's a comedy manga, so that, like, you know, if, if I'm not laughing at it, it, it kind of feels pretty just bland. Um, the art is okay. 
the writing is okay-ish. I didn't love either of the characters particularly, and it just like, I don't know, it wasn't exactly what I expected it to be, and that's okay, but also kind of under-delivered on my expectations, and I am just thinking like, do I give this three volumes? Like, I think that this series is only going to be four volumes long in total, so it'll be really easy to collect all of it, but I found the vault first volume just okay, and I don't know if it's worth getting the rest of it. If you read this, or are reading this, and have read the further volumes, because they aren't out yet in English, but you know, you can read them online, can you let me know what you think? Because I'm genuinely curious, like, is it worth, is it worth me reading the rest of it? Um, if you do that, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Up next is volume three of Claymore, and this, uh, I believe concludes, yes, it concludes the fight in that holy city of Rabona with, uh, Claire and Rocky, um, against this, like, really strong Yoma who's been hiding and, um, killing, like, members of the, the clergy there. And the art in this volume is just incredible. I really love the way Clay Claymore looks. You know, this volume was really interesting. It shows Claire almost turning into like a Yoma, I guess, um, losing control of her powers. But Rocky comes in and and really saves her with a, a hug, which is you know sweet and kind of just like a stereotypical friendship saving the day moment. But it was really sweet, and I really liked how that was implemented. And then it like kind of I guess flashbacks to flashes flashes back to talking about another claymore called Teresa Teresa the faint smile I think is her like moniker um, and she's really cool she seems to have some sort of relationship with Claire and I'm interested to learn more about that I just had a fun a ton with this claymore volume I'm loving claymore and I cannot wait to read more of it up next is the Promised Neverland art book world, which is just like such a bad name for a book, because what, what does that mean? Art book world? Like, no, let's just please. Okay, whatever. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, but regardless, you know, this is like uh, has a bunch of art from the Promised Neverland, which, as you know, like probably know, was a very popular series. I have all of it. I really enjoy it even though the ending and sort of even the last half of the manga doesn't live up to the first half. The first quarter really sets up a lot of interesting stuff. The second quarter is really fun and has some really good moments. And from there on out, it's like not as well considered is, are my overall feelings. But I still enjoy it to the point where I wanted to collect the art book. I really enjoy the art in this series. Um, it has some author interviews and stuff, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't read all of those. I just like, I might eventually, this is a thing where I'm like, I'm glad I own it, but I don't, I'm really not interested at this point in reading all the author interviews in here. But yeah, so that's, that's all I'm thinking about this. The print quality is good. The art is nice, you know. Good stuff. Maybe that didn't even look good on camera, but I'm telling you, it looks great. Okay, and then this is gonna be hard to show because it's heavy. But I got volumes two and three of Akira, and whoo, Zooey Mama. Let me tell you, I really do enjoy Akira. I really am having a good time with it. Um, I mean, it's a classic, but also I didn't expect to like love it as much as I do, you know? I enjoyed the first volume, but like volume two and three especially, I feel like things really just go, like they just keep going. The characters are interesting, they're, I feel like they're more developed now than, like I know, I know them better than I did before, which I really appreciate. Both of these volumes end with like wild explosion stuff going on, which is always cool. Like there's just a lot of like interesting action going on which I appreciate. The characters are good. The overall plot and pacing is amazing so far. And it's super cool to just like read it in these like huge volumes. They're really big and they're really wonderful. So just having a great time with this series and I'm really excited to see how it ends because I've never watched the movie either. So this is really gonna be my first experience with Akira as a whole. And moving on to the final thing that I have read in the month of November, 2022. 
we have volume one of Princess Jellyfish. And this is, you know, I would say one of the first shoujo or, or like Jose um, titles that I've ever read before, kind of. Like, I feel like I read some of Cardcaptor Sakura, but not all of it. I have a couple of other things that I've read. Um, and I don't want to do the thing where I'm like, oh, like, I like this even though it's a show. Like, it's just like, I'm, I just have less, not, for, I wouldn't say familiarity with it because I'm familiar with the kind of work, but I have less um, experience with it. You know, like I haven't read a lot of shoujo um, and Jose, and I really want to uh, read more of it because I, you know, I'm, I know that there's interesting stories and art and stuff in there. Um, and that's evident with Princess Jellyfish. Like I really enjoy the, the story. So basically it's about this girl who is like a jellyfish otaku and she like lives in this house with a bunch of other otaku who are kind of obsessive about a bunch of different things. Eventually she meets uh, this person who, uh, that person who is uh, dressed up as a girl, um, but he's actually a guy, so he's like in drag. Um, and there's just like a lot of good comedy, a lot of good interesting like romance drama honestly even within this first volume this is an like i guess this is sort of an omnibus release where it's two volumes in one but some really really interesting like relationship stuff going on between the characters the only thing i will say in terms of like a warning for this series is that in the first volume i believe well in yeah in this volume one of the characters is like drugged in order to sort of have it be planted in his mind that he like slept with a girl um and like she orchestrates that you know to kind of trick him and that's very strange like that's upsetting but you know the rest of it was pretty wholesome and it's not like that character's you know supposed to be regarded highly like she's supposed to be not be trusted after that because it's that's an insane thing to do to someone but it is also like a kind of just a wild sort of plot device to insert in there besides that i really enjoyed everything is is what i gotta say i really enjoy uh the characters i like especially uh the main girl and her two kind of sort of love interests which i won't spoil too too much um but yeah, it's just really delightful. Uh, I will say that some of the some of her roommates' little shticks get kind of old pretty fast, and like I don't need to hear a million jokes about the same the same thing. Like they're they're kind of one note, but they're still pretty fun. Like I don't dislike them. I just feel like I could get tired of them pretty soon. That is everything that I read for the month of November. I'm definitely going to try and do these videos like a haul and a reading log, maybe combined depending on how long I have each month. Um, you know, every month. So if you stick around, hopefully you'll be interested in watching those. If you have any other ideas for what you'd like to see from me, feel free to let me know. I'm thinking of doing sort of like a catalog video where I kind of walk through like the stupid little spreadsheet that I have of all my manga so that I don't buy duplicates and also I like know what I have. Um, I feel like that could be kind of fun. I guess I could also really do a deep dive into like a specific series but I would really want to do like a video essay on that and I don't know if I have the time or energy but you know I could try at some point. I feel like if I actually put my thoughts together I could say something that's interesting as opposed to like ooh this is cool <laughs> you know. Um, but regardless, I appreciate you being here, listening to what I have to say, thinking about manga alongside me, if not with me. So have a good day.